Yo, it's me and Rosa Lewis. Rosa is a super good person, as well as a spiritual teacher, and also knows lots of stuff. We talk about intuition, following your heart, how to sort of have fun with spirituality, and what it means to sort of be a human on Earth, living as a human. Bye! Hi Rosa, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing exactly the same way too i love it too much I too love much. <laughs> yeah. you're really I mean, similar think, to past you i think it's a good way to start because i feel like um there's something which uh we've both kind of picked on picked picked up on which is kind of like the uh the joylessness of it's almost like this uh asceticism mentality um yes. of a lot of modern practitioners and it's like uh what i've noticed at least for me is you know i i, I go through a lot of experiences and it's like almost like a survival mechanism at least for me it's like well if i'm gonna go through all these all the time it's gonna be you know i gotta have a bit of fun fun with it like i have to oh learn how God. to have fun yeah. um and Seriously. it's like when i when i tell people like oh you know uh, like it's like after talking to me at the end of the conversation, they're like, "Oh, it's like spirituality can be fun." It's like they're yeah. they somehow just like pick it up in the air. I, I'm curious what your sort of feelings are on, uh, yeah, sort of fun and and how people might, uh, yeah, integrate it a bit more. Yeah, I think both the things you said there are super important. One is that it's totally just the survival mechanism for me. Like if I, yeah, if I didn't have a sense of humor. I wouldn't have lived to tell the tale I don't think it just got me through all sorts and um yeah if you can laugh at yourself as well that's a huge gift because you can just like it all just seems less heavy in a way it's like a bit more funny a bit more <laughs> funny yeah um I I really like what we're saying here but I I want to know like if you could say to someone you know this is how you uh this is how you get like more more humor or more funny or like because I know I've I've been in like a joyless place in the past, and it's like I I don't know how I uh, if you have any thoughts on how to get out of that for yourself or or um I, because I feel like for me it's like it's almost like um there's something about accepting death for me which is like uh, which kind of mm -hmm. makes it work yeah a hundred percent yeah 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 it's like um if you can just there's a there's a there's some level of switch that happens in and it's kind of it's like a sense of joy or sympathetic joy but people i think when i say joy people think i mean like oh joyous but actually i feel like the biggest joys come from the darkest places in a way there's something about switching out of the mode where you're like really in something and you're just like ah and it's almost like something opens up to a wider perspective where you can see that just how absurd it all is and your role in it is it doesn't like undermine the feelings that you have you're not like bypassing if you're having a rough time saying like oh it you know it's part of a bigger system so it doesn't matter it's like it's part of a bigger system and right now this really fucking sucks and like <laughs> that, that's just annoying and like just kind of being able to embrace it in a way and, and sort of see yourself in it i don't know if that makes sense i really like what you're saying there and i feel like you're yeah we're, we're both trying to point to something which is just really really hard to it's just really hard to get um yeah it's something like uh Taking like the reality that you're just a human on Earth in a universe, like really, really seriously, and then it's like, ha ha ha, I'm just a human. You know, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's both, isn't it? It's hard to, it's really hard to put your finger on the, the on it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's a good. <laughs> good summary 
maybe we'll come into it more as the uh, as the conversation progresses. <laughs> um and then yeah for other people as well i think there's something about um like seriousness as a way as a sort of way of not going too deep into experience it's Ooh, like a way really of beautiful um and what did you say there i so got so enthralled with what you're saying i said it was beautiful that i missed what you said and i i like talked over you while you were talking what did you say no it's funny i was saying the um that's not that being serious is a way to keep yourself safe and stop yourself from going into going into experience too much it's almost like a fear part of fear yeah to Ooh. right i'm gonna stew on that and then yeah if you like loosen up a bit and have some fun with it then you kind of it's a little bit more vulnerable maybe but a way more real and way more like you're in actually in the experience i think yeah having fun with practice is actually a way to really like engage with experience more and deepen your practice and yeah uh, and that's the fire in the background everyone they're like bah, bah. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's actually once you know it's a fire all of a sudden it's kind of like nice it's like oh like white noise <laughs> yeah. yeah makes all the difference this is beautiful. Um, I've spoken a lot with my partner, Jess, about the difference in uh, uh, men and women. Got, you know, boys, boys and girls is a nicer way to put it. Um, and, it's, and just to be clear, she's a boy sometimes, I'm a girl sometimes, I'm a boy sometimes, she's, uh, I'm a girl, you know, sometimes. It's like, er everyone can be a boy about some stuff, uh, just for what I'm about to say, yeah. Kind of like the boy, the boy way is like, oh, I, you know, I've got some tension, and like the tension say like their sense of self, and they're like, ah, oh, the tension. I'm going to, like, hammer it. <laughs> get it get it, go away. Uh, and then the girl's like, I'll just relax the tension. Uh, and it's like this is a like the yin versus yang kind of thing is maybe a little bit more uh, nice way to put it. Like, yang's like, okay, let's, there's a wall. Let's break through it. And yin's like, okay, let's just, like, be nice to the wall. And maybe yeah. it'll just, like, you know, be, be, jelly, be jelly after we're nice yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think like culturally we've got too much I always forget which way around we are. But Yang is male. Okay, yeah, too much of that, haven't we, culturally, like um so we're all sort of skewed that way. Um we're all kind of like measure our worth and productivity and um care about the things we you know, things we achieve in life and blah 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 blah. And actually yeah, it's just coming back more into balance and having more of that feminine, um, like nurturing and how things feel. It's important, but yeah, there's a fierce. There's like the. I think the ideal is when you have the the compassion with a sense of like fierceness in it. So it's kind of not. Um, it's not like nicey nicey. You don't have to do the work. It's like show up and do the work, but. Um, be really caring about it and then yeah with the masculine it's not just like uh, it's like per like drive with a purpose and then when you have yeah when there's like that more balance i think that's that it works nicely um i feel like uh, there was something really interesting about sort of like uh so sort of how to bring the yin into your practice and it's kind of like, and it, and it links to the imaginal, uh, where it's like, the thing where it's like, you know, you can either break down the wall, like with a hammer, uh, or you can like love the wall and then it turns into jelly. It's like a different way of approaching the problem, which is a little bit non-conventional, um, but uh, it ends up working because of sort of the creativity and the playfulness of it. And I feel like that's really essential to that kind of energy yeah that's really nice i love that because i sometimes call it the, i call the imaginal the fourth dimension and it's almost like that one of the things i used to describe it is if you're in the same way that if you had 2d and someone hit a like an obstacle like that if you have three dimensions you can walk around it it's like the 3d would be if you have a 3d wall and you hit it and then the fourth dimension just opens up a different way where you that wall isn't the same doesn't have the same 
power or ability to like hold you back as it does in the imaginal sense it's like um yeah it's like we we have these sort of social norms that are kept for good reason in the in our three dimensions where we have to behave in certain ways and then in the fourth dimension it's like all of that can just be forgotten because no one can get hurt in the same way that they can in reality in the in the imaginal realm so it's like a huge yeah playground where the the walls don't need to hold you in as much so yeah i love that metaphor yeah and it's sort of when you come into right relationship with the imaginal instead of it being a thing separate from reality you kind of notice that it's more like a reflection of reality it's kind of like um yeah like a dimension of reality that's just as real as all the other three yeah. 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 Um, nice. Rosa, Rosa has suddenly appeared with headphones uh, due to the imaginal realm. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we can keep watching. Yeah, I, I feel like that's um, it's it's kind of interesting because I feel like this is something that I've been playing with for a long time, which is that to get to get balanced, it's like you have to go all the way to the other side. It's like you have to go. And I feel like a lot of people need to go all the way to the yin, to right to the yeah. edge of yin, uh, you know, yeah, and, and find that like loving care. Uh, but like you said, it's not like um, it's not niceness. It's it's like coming from the heart, like being committed to the heart. Um, yeah, I I didn't do myself justice here. This is it. This is a concept which I've very clearly articulated, and it's important, and it applies to everything. Where it's like to find the middle of something, you have to find the edge. So you have to go all the way to the other side of the thing, all the way to like full yin energy um, so that you can rebalance back to the middle because you don't know where the actual middle is unless you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, not just like intellectually, conceptually, but in your actual life and seeing in reality, like how far can I go with this thing? And eventually you go, oh, I get it now. And once you get it and you get the previous thing you're into, you're like, oh, I can actually balance these out. And it's always a natural process and it's never a conceptual process. You can't think your way into that. It's like with enough like sincere commitment to pushing through another side of something and getting to the edge of it, you are able to find more balance. And like you said, I think like yang energy is so prominent in the culture now that a lot of people need to really explore in their lives the reality of how useful yin energy is. Yeah. Yeah, I um, absolutely agree. And I... Yeah, my the, my one of my favorite quotes is "Always go too far because that's where you'll find the truth." And I, um, it started out with something that I was like, "Yeah, I'm really committed and interested in this," and then it became a process that had a life of its own. And um, yeah, just as you talk about that, there's like just a sense of oh god, just like dread of going to all those really far edges and like really pushing out beyond the edge of what felt anywhere near like reasonable and um but yeah you do you come back you come back to the middle and then it's like when it's integrated it's really nice but the process of pushing through that boundary is often horrendous and very stressful isn't it Horrendous and very stressful, but also in some way freeing and beautiful because you're breaking through this boundary that you thought was there and you realize it's not there. And realizing it isn't there takes the ground away from you because you don't know where you are anymore. You can't orient and you sort of, you kind of lost this system of being which you were in before. And that transition process of like reorienting is, is the, one of the hardest things in, in practice, but it, it's also kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think it can be fun. It can also be just like the worst thing that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah. Just indescribably awful. Just um yeah, that's like that that part of it is like suicide territory suicide inspiring territory for me. It's really full of um it's a very dark place, I guess, I've spent a lot of time in, but it's yeah, I I mean it's amazing when when it does come through there's like a lightness of having dropped the wall and 
ape and dap experience but um yeah plenty that was i wouldn't have done it if i had if i had any choice if i felt i had any choice in it for sure i um i really like what you said there where it's like you have to go you have to it's almost like this thing about going all the way to the edges like you have to go all the way into the dark to know what the light's like because otherwise you're like you you don't even know like what the what how good the light is uh what it's what it's like to be in the dark yeah um yeah yeah and i was actually uh i was uh curious how you um like sort of what what with your work that you do with people um mm -hmm. uh, which I, i'm guessing is mostly one-on-one -on -one, but you also do you're starting to do retreats now i think mm -hmm. um uh, in case it's not totally clear, you go and do sessions and retreats with Rosa. She's great. This is why I'm mentioning this. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have no excuse. Uh, you know, it's pay, pay on, the, what is it? Like, it's the Dharma paying system. It's like a... Yeah, yeah. Dharma, it by donations. Yeah. How that sort of looks in terms of what you're introducing people to and, like, what they're maybe... You know, what are the what are the some common blind spots? Because I know that when I'm talking to people, it's like I kind of I almost have like a um, you know, it's like I'm I'm wearing a I'm wearing a trench coat and it's full of all my like dharma tools and I you know I, I keep pulling them out, uh, and I, I'm curious like how that how that sort of thing goes for you, yeah. Yeah, I would say like the first the first thing that basically everyone needs is just a sense of like that compassion. It's like everyone everyone who comes across my path anyway is basically works super hard and is really tired and has had quite a hard life and is wants to show up and help people and um they basically beat themselves up about you know not being enough finding it hard you know, all these things and it's just like a sense of like yeah life's really fucking hard <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a great job and like um you obviously care and you're putting work into the spiritual side of things so that you know just like hearing some of that and being met with a bit of understanding and just like letting them tell their story a bit feels hugely powerful and then yeah some basic kind of like perspectives and tools I suppose around compassion and Care, like care and stuff like that um and then from there it depends it totally depends yeah it's almost like um a process of I guess there are common things but it's like it's almost like a yeah a process of that balance thing it's like trying to understand where someone is unbalanced so like um if they're overwhelmed with emotion it would be like a different um thing to recommend than if they're like really thinking up in their head um it's kind of like a process of like teasing that out and re it's almost like th there's this maybe a little bit of a process of like rewiring people's intuition it's like intuitively culture has taught them to go to go a certain way and to behave a certain way and to think about themselves a certain way and it's almost like rewiring that so that it's more in line with the heart and more balanced and more centered I think but I don't know if that's that's very sounds very vague <laughs> um it's hard it's hard it's always so vague when, like as soon as you start saying um the actual stuff it's like, oh, this isn't useful for anyone. <laughs> but it's so true. It's like so real and true. It's like, yeah, just like aligning your intuition with your heart is like such a real thing. But I feel like you have to kind of do it to know that it's done in a way. Um, but I, I, I actually wanted to talk about something else, which is like uh, these people who are caring for others and want to care for others. It's like they're they've got a blind spot where they're not able to care for themselves and direct that care inwards to these parts of themselves that are like hurting. And then it's like talking to other people and having friends who care for other people is really, really nice for them. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I've like recently I've been like, a, a, you know, I've been having massages and my body's like, thank God, like I'm finally being taken care of. And I'm like, oh, no, like what have I been doing? <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, I've got a really good chiropractor. Oh, I'm jealous. <sighs> I guess it does sound very... I mean, it's weird because you say it's very but I, I completely get what you mean. No, uh, I mean, cool. I get what you mean. Talking nonsense. <laughs> I guess... I guess um, uh, I just want to say that I have no idea what I'm saying most of the time. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> it's, it's like i yeah yeah I've, i i think i've lost a sense of what will make sense to other people i think that's part of my problem it's like i can talk at all these different levels and i want to connect with people i want them to be able to see get a sense to what i'm saying and then it's but i don't want to like it's like where's where, always trying to find like what's the way to say this that will be useful for people and interesting for people and not just me saying a bunch of stuff. Do you, do you know what I mean? I really relate, and it's it's so funny because I feel like the more the more in connection you are with the with the actual thing, the more nonsensical you get to uh, like ordinary consciousness, and it's like yeah, it's sort of finding that balance like we were saying where it's like. Finding that way where sort of this like heartful interconnectedness can interface with that human like conceptual thinking thing, and then they can kind of be friends. Uh, like that's what you want because you see a lot of people who are just um, really into the conceptual thinking thing, or really into like the into this thing, and they're just like saying gibberish basically, and it's like oh this feels good. Like I feel like they're coming from the right place, but yeah, I feel like there needs to be a balance there. Yeah. I'm just gonna maybe I, I think uh yeah yeah I'll I'll talk about it now when it yeah <laughs> I feel like what you're talking about is kind of you can sense if if you're someone who has balanced and then you sort of like um come into contact with someone who's unbalanced it's like you can sense the unbalance and it can be in like mm -hmm. a lot of different areas and then it's about sort of like adjusting that like somehow just following your intuition until they're sort of more aligned with. Uh, themselves and it's kind of like the more the more unbalanced you are like the less you're able to tune into your own like feeling of what's right or wrong and like what's what your heart wants um and i want to say that for me for me like this kind of process where i'm noticing where someone's unbalanced and i'm like telling them how to be more in balance it's the same thing as like oh like i know where to get the good sandwiches and this person's going to the bad sandwich shop and i'm like hey like it's just nicer and like tastier in this shop just so you know like you know it's like the same thing where it's like this uh empathetic like i've i've like learned something about some very particular thing that makes me feel better and i'm like i want this person to feel better as well so i'll just tell them this thing that i've noticed and hopefully they feel good it's not like i feel like kind of it can be it can when you're describing this stuff it can appear like it's some like magical like you know holiness or whatever it's like no it's the same thing as like you see your friend trying to open a jar like upside down and you're like the jam's gonna come out if you like and like also twist it like don't pull um it's the same thing yeah um yeah and yeah and i i really like what you said about uh i feel like this is a big part of my path and also what i like to give to other people which is kind of like everyone's kind of a like superhero with superpowers mm -hmm. um and they haven't really noticed that it's like I, I talk to people and then they're like yeah you know like i could actually i can actually project like as soon as i tried it and like i go on all these journeys and you know but i you know i'm not really i don't know anything about this spirituality stuff and you know it's like they have this like uh every, everyone's like has a unique like almost like gift uh and superpower which they like all they need is someone to say hey uh, hold up like you are talented and good at this and it's like all this suffering hasn't been for nothing uh and it's kind of like kind of like you're saying it's like re re um letting them reframe their own story so that yeah. they can sort of realign to what's not yeah it's a reality but also just sort of yeah more compassion for themselves um because i think that culture likes to give us the story that we're um, all, all equal uh, and all normal and it's like none of that's true uh none of us are normal we all have strange spiritual experiences 
And the more that you talk to someone about their spiritual experiences, the more you realize that, oh, it's like we're all actually very different and unique. Mm. Um, the way that me and my partner put it is it's like you get, you're giving someone a permission slip. It's like they didn't know they were allowed to trust themselves and do their own fun practice where they just listen to music and like have nice dreams and like, you know, get realized reality. Like they, no one ever told them that that was part of what they're allowed to be. Um, and it's, so there's something, there's something nice for the human animal, which is like when it's like, you're allowed to do this and it's good. And they're like, oh, I am? Yeah, you know, I'll do it all the time then. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think that's really nice. And the idea of finding, helping people find their superpower and um, allowing people to be weird. Yeah, that was a big um, theme. We just did a, an imaginal practice retreat. And that was a big theme that came out. It was nice to just be allowed to be weird <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> and no, it, yeah. like normality. Yeah. Um, sorry, just going to be excited talking about being weird because yeah, I, I feel I always I love being weird. I've always loved being weird. I've always been proud of being weird. It's like I'm almost too far on the like being weird scale, and I need some balance with normal stuff. <laughs> That's like where I'm at. Yeah, uh, I feel like something that I missed about what I was saying, which I didn't uh, yeah fully fully probably articulate. It's like when you are able to notice, and this is linked into knowing your heart. It's like the more in tune you are with your own suffering and sort of giving it space. Uh, the more in tune you are with what's actually going on with you. And that's kind of what mm -hmm. I understand to be like sort of realigning someone's intuition is making them aware of like where they're suffering and why they're suffering. Um, because they're suffering for like a good reason and they're on mm -hmm. a good path, but they, they, they've just somehow like blocked it out. And when they reorient to that suffering and notice it, it's like their their greatest weakness uh, is is their superpower. So it's like this thing which is like, you know, which doesn't help them fit into normal at all. And they see as like, oh, you know, I can't focus on like mathematics or whatever. Or, um, and it's like, wait a minute, but you're really good at intuition stuff. It's like the thing that, that, that doesn't let them fit into normal, the normal world is the thing that makes them a powerful and individual unique being. Um, and just to be completely clear, it's like, I don't think this is a, it's like, I, I'm not, I'm no different from anyone else. It's like, I, I, chat with people all the time so that they can point out my blind spot which i didn't realize was suffering that i can then becomes like a superpower that i'm like oh wow like i was suffering so much here and i didn't even notice uh, uh and i feel like it's also just like it's a very mechanical thing where it's like the human like just the way that we're made we just build these blind spots to our suffering so that we can survive and kind of letting ourselves know that we're going to be fine without doing that um and also, like, there's, I feel like there's a mechanical thing or, like, a natural thing where it's, like, as soon as we notice suffering in ourselves or others, we want to give love to it. And so, like, noticing suffering in ourselves, it's, like, we just start having compassion for ourselves and giving compassion to others, too, because we notice that same suffering in them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, yeah, the suffering is the key to like your story in life it's kind of the story i see it's like the story you've been given to to carry yeah yeah and i think there's something as well about that it's like um yeah it's saying that, that you do that work with people and i do that work with people i think it's like you can't this is the kind of stuff where it's hard to do it on your own or hard for people to do on their own um they need to, it's like if you have an environment where the weirdness is welcome or the suffering is welcome it just turns that process into something that is like absolutely horrible to go through kind of getting all your suffering out <laughs> into something where it's like actually that part of you that you are uh, repressing or rejecting or something is cool and interesting and like let's get out and have a look at it then that makes it a joy and a pleasure and interesting and rather than like a nightmare to have to go there yeah i feel like it's almost yeah i, I really like that and um i've been doing a lot of work with mark feenstra 
um and he he has like this thing called like community of being and it's kind of like um aligning your internal culture with uh like more more aligned with your heart basically mm -hmm. uh, um, by the way just feel free to start interrupting me or yourself and i'll just pause the video if you want to yeah um, um and that's you know his work is very he, he knows his work a lot better than i do i've only done a few sessions with him mm -hmm. um but what that reminds me of, it's like you, you bring someone in, you know, they, when they've been on their own, they don't have any friends who know about spirituality. Um, everything they're going through is like not normal and, every, and it's not useful in normal society and they don't have anywhere to express it or, or talk about it to. So it's almost like suffering and, and there's no, there's no end in sight. It's like, there's no, um, it's almost like. There's like a hopelessness to it because it's like, oh, like I really, I'm really addicted to this spirituality thing, but like it's not connecting or like resonating with anyone around me. And just like getting someone in a, um, to have a friend to talk about it and like re, re context and, and put it into like a new story where it's like, no, actually, like all of this, um, all of this actually makes sense and other people have gone through it too. And like this is actually a common human story, um, that we share. And it's like, and that, that, and then it's kind of like suffering, suffering has always been the thing that's, that's fun, you know, as long as it's like part of a fun story. Yeah. Uh, so it's like giving people like that, that fun story for their suffering when before, like they were just sort of lost, right? Like they, like they just, um, they were sort of born in the world and thrown in a tumble dryer and then just been tumble drying for the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah it's cosmic a, washing machine. That's yeah, like. oh, cosmic <laughs> washing yeah. machine. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, now it's like, uh, oh, like I'm in a cosmic washing machine. <laughs> yeah. This is better. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, that friendship is so important. Yeah, I, I, there's something about um, kind of like basic, as like human animals, the basic needs of. Um, yeah just being like hungry the, the i like the um the aa alcoholics anonymous have hungry angry lonely tired and they're like the four states where it's just like as a human being it's just really bad for you basically to be hungry angry lonely or tired and um yeah like not having the human connection not having a friendship is as bad as like not having enough food to eat or not being nourished it's it's kind of a need in and that level and people it's one of the biggest um causes of mortality is people being lonely it's one of the biggest like life expectancy indicators i wasn't really hearing you when you said that originally is that really the case it's like being lonely is the is it in a big indicator of mortality like you, it makes you like suicide i guess as well is uh like health i guess it would probably be a huge impact on suicide yeah they, they've done long-term studies with people like over um you know over lifetimes and yeah if you're lonely you'll die a lot younger than if you're not um and it, it's it's one of the strongest factors I, I gotta i gotta move out of my parents house and get some friends <laughs> <laughs> just affects everything like your health and so yeah i think it's like so important that the friendship and the connection and acceptance and um it feel it, it to me it feels like that is the core of what almost like the core of what the whole spiritual path is about like how can we connect with each other in like healthy healthy productive nice ways that make us feel good as humans um so yeah super important i think yeah I, I i mean i really agree with you about the human animal and i feel like um people uh i hate to i hate to just sort of uh, you know throw throw everything at people as a general category but mm -hmm. i feel like it's not really seen uh in general that um Sort of like the the life that we live is a outgrowth right now of of the human animal, and you know the human animal it likes stories, you know it likes sex, uh, it likes uh, food, it likes sleeping, it likes shelter, and it's like we're just kind of like always trying to fill. I mean, and it likes friends, you know, it likes socializing. Um, 
And it's kind of interesting how uh like a lot of a lot of spirituality in the way that it's like uh institutionalized i feel like and a lot of institutions in general sort of like systems uh you know be it like sort of um monastery type systems or uh you know it's like they're they people go through some powerful experience and then they you know they want friends to talk about it with it it's like no just keep meditating uh yeah. like forget about it it's like well uh i don't know that doesn't seem great i don't know i don't know but i don't have any experience with meditation retreats but i i get that vibe where it's like you know we're not really being open with ourselves and our experience and our reality and our story um when we're yeah not not able to talk about it freely with each other and i feel like there's this new new sort of a new wave of uh spirituality now especially in sort of the younger generation where it's like you know i'm i'm trying i'm trying all this crazy stuff and talking about it with all my friends all, all the time it's like and it's not really you know it's um and with the internet having so much internet uh information available and sort of teachers available everyone's kind of finding out things on their own and then these like gatekeepers who are like no fun don't talk about anything you know, they're just kind of getting like swarmed by these like uh, all these people having spiritual experiences who are talking about it online. Yeah, yeah right. The gatekeepers. Of... Yeah, go ahead. What was your first spiritual practice? How did you get into the, into it? I should ask. Yeah, I've never done any practices. <laughs> I I I just read a book. I just read books. That's my thing. What, what book did you read? Though? First, I read Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings. Um. And then I basically walked around, mm, it was like first year of university, so I just walked around Cardiff and like connected energetically to trees. I just like look at a tree and I would like just feel like, oh, this is like interesting somehow. And like, and I'm like getting something out of it. And I don't know what. And I kind of like just stare at it and like tune in. And then like the interestingness would like fade away and I'd be like, oh, I feel like, I feel like I understood something, but I don't know what it is. Um, and I did that with like art, with trees, with just like sky scenes uh for a while after after and then i you know did it with Miyamoto Musashi's book of five rings and i was like huh like when i did it with Miyamoto Musashi's book of five rings i was like this isn't like it's not going away like the more like the more i tune in like the more there seems to be um and then i was reading um i was reading some Eckhart Tolle uh and i was like oh this is just like a i was i was out I was like, it seems like he's just like repeating all these other, like copying, copy pasting from all these different people. Um, but then he was like, oh yeah, you can like observe the observer. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll try it. And I was like, okay, let me observe the observer. Observe the observer. And it's like brain collapse. And I was just like, I just like went for a walk and like looked up at this lamppost. And it's like the light, the light from the lamppost sort of like, spread out like an explosion into everything and everything became like super beautiful i just like fell on the floor in the pouring rain just like in like just getting pounded by this beauty yeah and ever since then uh just like mm, multiple times per day without me really instigating it i just get like whammed by insight yeah intense cool thanks no problem <laughs> so yeah i don't i've never been a I, i'm discipline isn't my thing at all <laughs> okay cool yeah lost their power haven't they that's interesting because of the internet um yeah oh and i wanted to say about these systems i feel like whenever you build a system or an institution or like a way of organizing people or like a culture based on concepts not what the human animal needs and the heart that's when it doesn't work yeah yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah, I feel like in a structured religious setting or it's like the it's like you start the people at the bottom don't get to talk about their experiences and then as you work your way up the pyramid to the teacher, like they get to talk about their experiences, but then that teacher is just sort of taking that experience and almost like sharing it as truth and saying like, Oh, this is this is the ultimate nature of reality or this is like what we all want to aspire to whereas yeah this more like much more sort of democratic shared way where everyone's kind of like welcomed and is much more interesting and more I think um stuff happens quicker for people and um more fun for everyone 
um yeah it's nice yeah i i think humans like we're talking about human needs it's like one of the human needs is to like do interesting fun things <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. um that need is wasn't being filled by institutions and yeah. it's like yeah. it's and it, it makes perfect sense that um sort of the humans would self reorganize into better structures like regardless of whatever it was going on <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah there's like a growth of um there's like a growth isn't there of the structure from kind of like fixed hierarchies into a sort of capitalism of like the best is the winner um into this more sort of like yeah starling like kind of um people are all just hanging out and that's cool and doing interesting stuff <laughs> There's no like it's much structure more, more structureless. It's really, it's really beautiful. And that's the ideal for me. The ideal world. It's like everyone can just hang out with whoever they want and like be friends and like there's no there's no gatekeepers. There's no prison guards. There's no um, no currencies uh, being traded around. It's like we're just all yeah. We're just it's like oh I want to hang out with this person. It's like I intuitively my heart feels like this is the right person to talk to. I'll talk to them. And that's kind of just like the whole path. It's like talking to people that your heart tells you to and then going to places that your heart tells you to and then like doing like going through experiences in, in a like compassionate way for yourself and others. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really nice thing to aspire to. And there's also there's something about like the cosmic time scale or maybe not, maybe not the cosmic time scale. Maybe that's a bit big. The human time scale. Where when you look at it that way, um, it's like the all that hierarchy and structure served a really important role to pull us out of this more sort of tribal way of being. It was kind of like the step out of that because in it, it's like not yeah, it's not a kind of anarchy. It's like integrating the good bits of structure and hierarchy because they you know education free education is helpful for people and like laws are good at keeping people safe and all of these things it's like carrying all of those along and then just dropping off all the the stupid pointless hierarchy that is like you know managers are like more somehow like better people than people who aren't managers or whatever <laughs> like um yeah keeping the good bit and seeing the growth and the progress and letting go of the bits that don't serve anymore. Beautiful, yeah, and I yeah, and may that may that go uh, as well as we want it to. Yeah, I suspect there might be a world crisis coming. There's <laughs> <laughs> normally a breakdown, isn't there, before a big change? But we'll see. Yeah. Sorry, did we have more to say? No. I I really like that because <laughs> for me I feel like I feel like I feel like you're responding to more than just the question with like do you have more to say no like nothing at all like just happy forever like never saying anything uh yeah I vibe with that really, it's really beautiful sorry did we have more to say no that's um cool. I uh. I really like that because for me I feel like I feel like um on a individual level that's what we're trying to do as well is uh, you know destabilize these hierarchies and power structures and uh, cultural norms so that we can just see the bare reality without sort of these control structures that we've been uh, brought up in which is sort of this patriarchal system of like a a family and you know family is great but sort of the um, history of it carries through uh in, in sort of the um the like growth of, of a child and you start thinking of everything in terms of like, oh, you know, there's an authority and I'll listen to the authority and the authority is going to like give me my good experiences and happiness and friends and um, that's how I'm going to get them. And then it's just sort of, I feel like spirituality is almost like the human animal noticing that it can get those things for itself and it doesn't need to rely on all of this like human culture stuff that we build up for some reason. Noticing all the pointless stupid stuff. Like, oh, it's pointless and stupid to think in concepts all the time, actually. I'm just going to, like, you know, dance around a bit more. Uh, yeah. 
um yeah yeah really nice yeah you're sort of re it's like the way that it's happening in society yeah it is definitely very similar to how it happened in the individual and vice versa it's like they don't do it without the other one they're both they're so intertwined that we're like individual expressions of that society and that society is an expression of all the individuals that make it up um yeah and yeah the dismantling of the fixed ways of experiencing the world is yeah what it's kind of all about isn't it it's like seeing through to just being a bunch of animals like floating around on a rock in the middle of the universe but also like the complexity it's like the simplicity and the complexity at the same time isn't it it's both that's the hard thing i felt like um i oh, was sorry no go on um just just that um sort of the simplicity and the complexity uh, same thing it's like for me my my frame is like we've got sort of all these all these blinders on reality and it's like as we take off the blinders we see things more clearly and that makes things more simple because we don't have to like look through like all this stuff anymore. But it's also really complicated because we're looking at, at reality. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, because reality is actually insanely complex, obviously, because it like creates this whole universe, which uh, you just take like a tiny bit, any tiny thing of, a, of the whole universe. Is just insanely complex isn't it and that just goes bigger and bigger and bigger so it's yeah it's there's a lot um and humans are so complex as well there's so much to explore in so many levels and um yeah it's 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 a lot of complexity but yeah once you're once you've sort of integrated the bits of complexity it's like each moment can be very simple because yeah you're just like being shown a thing in a moment and then another thing and then another thing and that's that's okay that's cool yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think about all the crazy stuff yeah i really i really like that and that's something that i've noticed as well it's kind of like um let me just experience like the whole of human time history and culture and then oh now i don't have to think anymore it's like yeah. huh that you know you go through these really complicated like you know, weird like rat maze of like in in four dimensions, uh, and at the end of it, you're like, oh, that means that I don't have to think about stuff. I'll just stop thinking about it then. Yeah, yeah. you end up in stillness. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally relate to that. Oh god, I feel that. I feel so many notebooks of just like <laughs> really. It was just like a machine, just like <laughs> reprocessing, 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 and then at the end, it was just like, oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know how many word documents I have, which are just filled with like. I am God and like God is everything and like I'm just like writing like what I'm trying to understand like and and like everything is everything but like nothing's everything and it's like and then I like and I look, read it back and I'm like wow like I, I like I had fun writing it and like writing it was useful but man like none of this is yeah 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 this is how it is um, but yeah, the process is important. I think the process is really important. And I, I think there's something as well about the um, thing you were saying about everyone having a superpower where it's like if everyone's process is a bit different as well and you're sort of integrating different things and um, learning different things that you can then like embody and share and connect with people from that place. Yeah, and I think it's... um. I think what we're seeing now is kind of a shift from mm, relying on others to trusting ourselves. It's like that's that's kind of the shift that that kind of would benefit I think the most people because mm -hmm. sort of our I feel like we everyone already knows like the practice that's that's best for them. You know, I the amount of people that I talk to are they like, "Oh yeah, you know, um you know, I tried, I tried doing a astral projection one time and it worked like so well. Uh, 
and then you know i don't know I, people you know people other people didn't really talk about it so i thought i'd stop doing it and now i yeah i've been meditating and i haven't made any progress it's like go do the thing that you found <laughs> fun and interesting and just like trust trust your instinct and trust like what you trust your own experience um and like what i uh um there's something to this as well for people who are attuned to energy and can recognize when things happen in their energy body, like really, when I when I say I don't have a practice, what I mean is whenever I felt like doing something was making something move in my energy body and making something happen, it's like that's how I know that it's working. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And then eventually, oh, it's like it just feels like it's done. And you can just get a sense of that by feeling in yourself. It's like, oh, what feels good? Like, what feels right? Like, what feels like it's doing something? And you kind of know when, when something's doing something. And you kind of know when something isn't. And sort of just trusting that instinct and almost honing it by by trusting it. Yeah. 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 But I think in some people it requires a bit more opening, doesn't it? And yeah, it doesn't come so naturally to everyone. But I definitely agree. Yeah. So once you have that level of connection and an intuition with it just following the thread of it and yeah super nice yeah that's sort of like i feel like there's a lot of what i tell people or, or like find out from people it's like oh you're really good at something um and you kind of know what's up and it's like letting them see for themselves like through uh because like i i i giving them sort of an objective view of themselves makes them notice that they kind of already know how to do all this spirituality stuff without any help yes yeah I, um yeah it's interesting yes i think that's true but i think there's something about that doing that together and hearing that from someone that is important in that process and that being like yeah trustworthy and coming from a place of yeah sort of care non-hierarchy um i guess there's lots of people who've been who've been sort of yeah it'd be interesting it'd be interesting i've never i haven't really spoken to anyone in depth about it but it'd be interesting to hear from people who have like followed teachers and had a rough time of it and like what was happening intuitively there because there's something about I think there is something about needing community and needing friendships where that where they feel like healthy and that being like a super important value of mine and that kind of trust and integrity and um I guess having a place where you know you can go where that's there feels important and then that kind of facilitates an opening to your own intuition because you're in a healthy environment where your intuition sort of like can get a sense of can get a good sense of what feels good rather than it being like you know if you were with a narcissistic spiritual leader or whatever that part of the problem is that it's messing with your intuition isn't it and like to, you know trying to undermine that and so you, it's hard for people to listen in to that maybe yeah yeah and I, I that's why i find it so insidious when i see people um i'm just gonna call it, like i see like benteno masaro and he does like uh instagram posts where it's like you know you're you're a lower vibrational entity it's time to like raise your vibration it's like enough like being shit it's time to be good it's like ah oh, that's not that's not how you like that's how that's how you get people to you know follow you because then they think that they're incompetent um but it's not how you get people to realize truth because like truth truth isn't from anyone else it's always from just ourselves and yeah. like the only the only uh the only person i think you can call a teacher is someone who yeah like helps you come into better relationship with yourself um and i feel like yeah i feel like it's impossible for us to Come into a good relationship with ourselves when yeah our our culture that we're in our situations that we're in aren't letting those parts of ourselves that know like truth to to feel safe or welcome or like allowed and it's kind of um i feel like that's a really great tie into what i was saying before where it's like 
you know, there's they're in they're in a norm they're in like normal ordinary world, and they're repressing all these experiences that kind of know truth because they're not fitting in. Um, and then those parts of themselves start to like learn. Oh, like we're not welcome, and we're not. We're not. Mm. We don't deserve to be trusted. It's like we're not normal, and that means that we're bad. Mm. And it's like uh, reaching out, reaching out to those parts of ourselves, uh, or letting someone else reach out to those parts of ourselves and say, "Hey, you know, you're really good, actually, and you know a lot of stuff." It, that feels really nice for those parts of ourselves, and for, like that human animal part where it's like, um. All all it wants is to be recognized for what it is, and like have a, have someone be friendly towards it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I feel like this is something that people that like you can have your cake and eat it. It's like you you get all your truth from your day to day life. Um, and your day to day life is your cake, and it's like a lot of people. It's like they they then they go find someone to ask if they can eat it. It's like you can just eat the cake. Uh, you know. There's just a lot of suffering and, and tough stuff in there. Um, but it's a okay, cake and it's nice. And, and, you know, that's really what you want. If you want truth, it's like you, you're not going to find it in what other people have told you. You're always going to find it in sort of like whatever you're going through all the time. It's like whatever it is right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more. I actually found that very moving watching that. It was, um, yeah, I could really feel the part, like, I think... We'll talk a bit later on about loneliness and I think some as well it's like this idea of um yeah the bits that no truth not being welcome I think there's a way that we do it to ourselves but also a way where it happens in a systemic way where it's like people don't necessarily want to hear the truth or recognize it or appreciate it in others and yeah there's just something just like touched on something the way you were wording it that I found moving yeah that this is all coming from Mark Feenstra you know who's spent a lot of time sort of giving me this welcoming you know it's like um you know I'll bring up a part of myself and I'd be like welcome like I welcome that part uh, like that part's you know I feel like that part's, you know, got a superpower too. And it's like, that part's like loved and, and welcomed and like it knows something and like, let's trust it. Uh, and like, I really, I really like that energy is so powerful too, because it's, and it's true. It's like the more you trust these parts of yourselves and, and uh, other people to be like these beautiful beings that are worth trusting and know truth and are great, uh, the more that that ends up being true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's that's actually I do a lot of like parts work like that with people in the imaginal in the journey and space. Yeah. Um yeah, and, and, and there's something I think it's like there's something about it coming up in relationship where you can you can integrate something on your own. I've I feel like yeah, you can integrate something on your own. And until it gets connection with another human, until, like you said, someone is like, hey, someone else is like, hey, this is coming up and that's nice and it's appreciated. Then it, um, yeah, it feels different, I think, doing it on your own to doing it with others. Um, yeah, it's, there's something here for me, which is like the fractal, the fractal view where like everyone everyone's the same thing it's like the the fractal like recognizing itself uh and then it's like you both kind of come into more connection with the whole thing when you see each other like you see you you really do see like the reality of each other uh and it's really satisfying for everyone involved <laughs> yeah no. yeah totally yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's like, yeah, loneliness is huge, isn't it? I feel like that's kind of my, is it, talking about stories, I feel like loneliness has sort of been my story in a way. Um, and yeah, it's nice to like allow that as well. My dog loves woofing. She, whenever she hears a sound, she's woofing away. 
So, so yeah, that's her before bedtime woof, is what we're hearing. <laughs> uh, my parents are taking her out. Um, I was like, you carried on so perfectly without any giving any indication that you know you heard that. Uh, that I didn't even know that it came through the mic because I was quite surprised that I heard it come through the mic then. Yeah. I wouldn't allow that to be there. Um, yeah, there was something else that you just said that was really good, but I've... Oh, it's the part we get to talk oh. over ourselves because we forgot what we were saying. This is a problem with uh, uh, spiritual types. We've got no idea what we just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, if we stay quiet, then we can talk over it in the reaction. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, we'll laugh. <laughs> laugh at myself. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, can see, I can see my features. <laughs> yeah, you were saying about the knowing. Mm. Because there's something really important that lots of spiritual teachers don't distinguish between, and that's the mind's knowing and the heart's knowing. And people get really confused that, and they will talk about, they'll say like, oh, it's impossible to know this or you, you know, it's all about not knowing or you've got to let part go of the part that knows. And the mind's knowing and the heart's knowing are completely different. And so when people talk about it, that I guess the way I would phrase it is you're letting go of the mind's knowing, like that controlling kind of knowing where you want to, understand things very concretely and relaxing into the heart knowing which is more that sort of like direct knowing of things like a feeling of just like being in contact with stuff very intimately but if you don't distinguish them then you end up either yeah it like I, I thought what you said distinguish it really nicely it's like finding the parts of you that are that already know and know the truth and keep connecting with them it's kind of like yeah cultivating that heart knowing and allowing it to come out and, and blossom and um yes yeah, almost like getting your mind out of the way of that a bit i feel like um the way i would frame it uh and i hate to just like um i feel like i did it's like a yeah i'm just building up what you're saying um my friend always complains I one up him is what I was trying to say. It's like someone he says something and then I'm like I like take it and I'm like understand it and I'm like oh like let's make this even cooler. And he's like uh, uh, okay. and eventually he was like like I can't beat you. <laughs> like I keep trying like I keep being funny and then you're just funnier. Yeah, and I was being a bit self conscious about it here. Yeah. Oh no, I really like that style of conversation where it's like this thing, this thing, this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My favorite. Yeah. It's like coming into uh like the relationship between the heart and the mind being being the right relationship. And it's like the heart knows a lot of stuff, uh and the mind is good for some things. It's like good at mm -hmm. you know, phone numbers. Uh <laughs> it's good at stuff like that. Um and it's almost about I I feel like letting the mind and heart know that they're there for each other and they're friends with each other and they can rely on each other. Um, and when they know, when the mind knows it can rely on the heart, it's like, oh, I can relax because all, all any of us want and any part of us wants is just to relieve suffering. We're always working to make ourselves and everything happier and suffer less and be free. Um, so all the mind needs to sort of come into contact with is the reality that everything is already known and like safe and true and loved. And the way that it, that happens is sort of this, uh, in, in time and space, the way that happens is, you know, you, you just sort of trust your heart more and more. And the more you trust your heart, the more you notice that it's really working and it feels really good. And then eventually, you know, you trust your heart so much that your mind's like, okay, I really trust my heart now. Like you're doing a better job at relieving this suffering and you're like helping everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, and I just want to give room for like it can also be spontaneous. It's not even it doesn't have to be, um, you know, this grudgery or not even grudgery, but like yeah, gradual, like trusting of your heart. You know, I've known people who it's like they're they're just kind of chilling, and then it's like oh, like I spontaneously trust my heart, and then it's like 
doing everything and it's like you're aligned all the time and it's great all the time uh like michelle bowen was like that on instagram if anyone wants to check out she she does like sessions with parents uh this like yeah she's great but yeah i, I just want to give room for that that possibility too uh yeah yeah cool yeah yeah definitely improving the relationship between the heart and the mind i think that's what it's kind of all about um i think there is something about trusting the heart when it's saying that it's not safe and it's not loved and it's not happy day that is important it's like understanding that that's true and that's the heart can tell us that as well um um yeah i feel like that's a huge part of like the journeying and that i do with people is it's kind of like opening your heart to the bits of life that you normally close your heart to <laughs> it's slightly confusing but it's like the situations where yeah it kind of like opening to the to the suffering and and just letting, yeah like you said it's just like allowing it to be there and not needing it to be different um and just letting that sort of be part of life in a way that creates a really deep trust in yourself and I think it creates that sort of fierce compassion where you are willing to like stand up for the things that matter because you know that you need them in life and that if you want them you're going to have to fight for them um or you're going to have to speak out for them or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, opening to the depths of suffering and even the parts that can't be solved or um, you can't sort of trust in or they don't offer any relief even when you have fully integrated them. That opens up a level of sort of, yeah, really strong, fierce compassion in people. I really like this, um, and I don't know if I'm interrupting what I'm about to say, which is going to be great or something, but um, in Zen, they have a saying, which is like, they, you know, there's there's this monk, and he's like, like he goes, to, he goes to this master, he travels all the way to get to this master, and he's like, how do I, like, what do I do to realize the truth? And he's like, there's a great treasure house, like, under your feet, and you've just wasted your time coming here. And I think like that's kind of like noticing these treasures in ourselves, like that have, that are there, and then that's where the compassion comes from, and like the fierceness comes from. It's like no, like these parts of myself are valuable, and I want to and I want to stand up for them, and I don't want to just like let people talk over them or like let normal society like tell me that they're wrong. Like I I I I love them, yeah. Um. Yeah, I really, I really like that. Uh, and I think that really points to uh, sort of all, all the other stuff that we've said as well, where it's like integrating spirituality into your life that you already have. It's like you're you're already living in reality um, and, all, and you already know all about it. Uh, there's just sort of this insensitivity or numbness or like, yeah, like fog, which is kind of... Um, this suffering which has been ignored or, or pushed away and it's like sort of coming into contact with ourselves our like actual selves like right now and no no like fancy you know true self like greater self than that. it's like the one the one that we are ignoring in ourselves you know the one that that feels uh you know all of this normal stuff we do you know getting fast food or i don't know watching television or you know uh doesn't feel good at work or it isn't productive it's like all of that stuff is um it's almost like the it's a gold mine for finding things to be compassionate for and to find truth in and it's sort yeah. of like the path isn't about transcending that stuff in the sense of like moving out of it it's like really coming to terms with who you are it's like i've kind of just learned i'm just not gonna ever be a productive member of society <laughs> uh, and that's a, an enlightened realization uh, and uh, something i was pointing to here this to really clarify, it's like, I really feel like the path is, is about learning who you are, really. And it's who you've always been as well. It's not about learning to be something other than what you've always been. 
Um, and I feel like that's a trap that people can go to. They're like, they're like looking somewhere else. It's like, yeah, they're looking, they're looking for their glasses that are like on their head. Where they're like, where's my true self? Like, where's my true self? It's like, it's the one, it's the one that goes to sleep and wakes up and lives their day and has, yeah, does all their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like video games, you know, I like hanging out with my friends. That's about it. <laughs> and I'm not going to do anything else, so may as well make it work. Uh, yeah. And uh, aren't you just um, finishing PhD as well? Oh, I handed it in today, actually, yeah. Oh, did you? <laughs> ah, today! Yeah. Congratulations. Celebration podcast. Uh, yeah, amazing. Wow, that's just... Good job, me. Nice one. Productivity, for sure. I worked in a, about an hour a week for five years. <laughs> uh, you know, Sometimes less. So it's like a set, set up meeting with a, a, my supervisor. Oh, it's the hour before the meeting. Let's get some work done. That that's that was my PhD, uh, and it ended up so it ended up okay, you know, through um, by by having a really nice supervisor, basically, who was really um, generous. Thank uh, you, Stephen Shotkar. So yeah, mm, no productive, <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, friend. and then Thank somehow you. managed to get it. Yeah, 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 good work. Um, so I think we can maybe switch to the reaction now. If and here we are in the reaction now. Um, Rosa, do you have any final final words, thoughts, feelings, things to say? Yeah, I found this a very interesting process. I'm sort of like coming out of it now. I'm like, well, <laughs> just like recording something and I'm watching yourself and talking over it. It's like the algorithm's gone into hyperdrive. <laughs> Yeah, this is very like cracked out um content. <laughs> it's like uh my, my gamer brain and like always been online brain. I I just like noticed like, hey, wait a minute, we can like ramp up the stimulation on this podcast thing by like a thousand if we do this stuff. So let's do that. Yeah. That's really nice. I oh. think that's some my last reflections, really. That's some good reflections. Yeah, I feel the same way. I get, I get, I get super like this was too much like feeling. But whenever I do one of these, but it's also great. So yeah, thank you so much, Rosa. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, uh, it was really fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, Rosa C. Lewis on Twitter. Check her out. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks.